Hello everyone and welcome to yet another of my tutorials. In this tutorial, I intend to show you how to use the mean and max function in, uh, in carrying out uh, revolving credits, you know, modeling it out and then seeing how things turn out after you model. So here I have uh, cash inflows. I have some numbers here and I have uh, cash outflows. Uh, numbers here they are denoted by uh, negatives and what this means is that these could just be the sum of lines of cash inflows in your model and this could also be the sum of cash outflows uh, from different lines uh, of use so uh, just to make it simple I've used just two, two lines that's one line for each of them so if we've got to this stage, the next thing we need to do is to come up with our uh, cash balance. And to do that, we'll be using um, a cock and screw uh, model to do that. And uh, this is going to be our cash balance. So you can call it balances. Um, okay. So. So we are going to, let's just have this on very. Okay, so let's give it some breathing space. So we're going to have as our opening balance and we have the, um, our inflows and uh, we also have our outflows here and we can just copy this and it gives us uh, because the same thing that we want in here let's format them to have uh, our bracket so that's our inflow and that's our outflow. Then we have our closing balance. We have our closing balance here. So I want to make this bold and uh, it's just giving a line like this. So that, that, that's what it is. So our opening balance is going to equate whatever was the balance in a previous period. So we're going to use here so if we had any balances we could just put it here as our opening balance and that would feature in here so we have that as our opening balance and by the time we do a sum we do a sum of opening balance in and out and then we see that we have um, we see that we have some periods where we have negative uh, cash balances what that implies is that during these periods we need some cash to come in uh, into the business okay so we need to uh, borrow some money in order to meet these shortfalls also we bring in another condition here and that's the minimum cash balance what this means is that whatever the case we need a minimum cash balance this time we just assume uh, uh, the number two as our minimum cash balance uh, we could use it here too that would be our minimum cash balance and then we just implement it all through A minimum cash balance is actually uh, a cash balance that 
is required to meet some unexpected, unplanned exigencies that might come in the business. So even if we were able to break even here, meet our cash uh, our balance and it's zero here, but we still need uh, a minimum cash balance to be held for such unexpected reasons. So if we've got our minimum cash balance, the next thing we want to uh, determine is what will be our credit borrowing, credit borrowing requirement. What will be our credit borrowing requirement? Now, if you notice here, we had a negative of one, meaning that we would need one to make this uh, zero. And then we also need a minimum cash uh, balance. So we can assume that these two, um, this uh, minus, sorry, minus this, because uh, the minimum cash balance is something we need to keep for such uses. So we just assume that it's an expense of a sort, but it's a cash balance waiting to be used. So we find out that we actually need a three. Yeah. So we take it all through. And so you can see that there are some times it is positive and there are some times it is negative. But for the credit borrowing requirement, we actually need the negatives. So we're going to refine this formula a little bit. We're going to use the mean function. We're going to use the mean function, mean. And here we're told that the mean returns the smallest number in a set of values. So that's exactly what we need. We are going to look for the mean of this result, whatever this result is, and zero. That's because we want to trap the negatives. If it's not negative, give me zero. So that's why we have this here. So you can see that it gives us all the points where we have uh, a negative uh, cash balance and we need to get some borrowings for it. Now, interestingly, uh, we also want to identify what cash is available for uh, credit pay downs what cash is available for this credit pay downs so still this formula helps us to do that and interestingly all we need to do is change our mean to a max the max returns the largest value in a set of values. So we're going to ask it, give me the largest value between the result of D13 minus D16, or give me a zero. So if you see what this one does, it does the opposite of what we have previously done. Wherever we have uh, a positive balance, it gives us the answer. It gives us, it brings it out for us. So these are the periods where we can use this cash, you know, to pay down our credit borrowings. Take note, this cash is already taking care of, um, uh, it's already taking care of our minimum cash. It's out of it. And so we now have this to take care of any uh, credit borrowings that we may have done previously. So right now, let us, um, let us create a schedule for our borrowings. So let's have this copy. Um, let's place it here. So uh, credit borrowings. So these are credit borrowings and we want to have an open balance we want to have a close before the closing balance we need to identify what are the additions we are bringing in to this um,
what additions we're bringing to it and pay downs okay what pay downs and then what's that closing balance to be all of them everything yeah. so, start this, yeah okay so fine so what will be our opening balance that will be just any closing balance in a previous period and what will be our additions additions are additional borrowings that we're going to be making it's right here for us to see so so yes and then what would be our what would be uh, the pay downs what will be paying off to reduce our loans now in this uh instance i want you to understand something that while this is cash available for pay downs, it does not necessarily mean that whatever we're going to be paying is equal to whatever it's here. Sometimes we might have a situation where we have uh, cash available for pay downs, but it's greater than what we actually should be paying. So what we should have here for pay downs is actually the minimum of what we are to pay so that is captured in our opening balance or the closing balance of the previous period and then and what we uh what what cash is available for pay downs so it needs to look at what is the minimum between these two and then give it to us secondly Secondly, since we are paying down, it should be a negative. It should be a negative. And then if at all we have additions to signify that it's a, a, a cash flowing in, it should be positive. So this is what we have. So we're going to copy this down. And then uh, we look at what is the balance of our borrowings. So here they are, and here it goes. So this is the balance of our borrowings. You can see that uh, we had two to pay out. It reduces to six. We paid out another. We had six here, and we went for an addition, and we had a eight here, and then we went for yet another addition of three. We have 11. We were able to pay down one here. And it comes to 10 and you can see uh, we had five uh, credit borrowing balance here and then we were able to pay that off here notice that we have nine as cash available but we're paying just five of it so we have liquidated all of our credit borrowings and even though we have 13 here we don't need to pay anything here so the model just works fine for um for, for that purpose so one thing we don't want to forget in this uh in this uh model exercise is the interest rates you know you've uh, gone to borrow some money and yes you're paying back there also comes interest uh, for each of these uh, borrowings that we must have made so what we need to do is that for all our balances, for all our closing balances, we need to uh, capture the interest rate. And that interest rate is going straight up um, into uh, our cash flow balances. But this time around, it's going to just be uh, an item here. So we're going to interest payments. So interest payments. So we're going to have it here. So we're going to assume uh, anything we could assume, just any rates. But uh, we would just assume that interest rates here is 1%. That interest rate is 1%. So 
what we do is that we're going to go for our borrowings, the closing balance in the previous uh, period, and we'll multiply it. We'll multiply it by one percent. So we multiply it by one percent, and we lock it. We're going to lock the row using our F4 button to lock the column rather. So we lock the column and uh, we we copy it down here. Yeah. One more thing. This is an outflow, so it's going to be in the negative. So it's going to be in the negative. So that's interest payment. Now uh, we need to update this uh, formulas here because you can see it's just looking at this, but we wanted to look at the interest rate. And you already know what that would mean. It's going to reduce our, our, our closing balances. But our model will work just fine, as you would see. So let's update this. Uh, we we'll just include the interest, and uh, we have this go round. So that's what it is now. So you can see that uh, 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 we now have uh, here, we, we, we had four but it's now reduced and uh, we take out the minimum balance and this is what we have. So that uh, has played into all of this. Uh, we need to format these again. Uh, no, let them have this. Okay, so fine. So this is what we now have as our model. It includes the interest payments now. And then this is our balances. This is where we uh, liquidate all of our credit borrowings. And here you can see that we have nothing to pay for and it's just left there. Yes, we still have uh, some cash left for uh, uh, pay downs. Now, in real life, you might have other pay downs that you want to uh, uh, do. So now that you have taken care of your short-term credit borrowings you could want to use the excess for yet other pay downs in a model this will be available for you to use so this is how we can use the min and max functions to elegantly come up with models re relating to um, uh, revolvers or credit borrowings at different times based on uh, our cash availability. I hope you found this uh, interesting and you learned something about it. Um, you could look at my previous videos where I treated depreciation and used the mean function for reducing balances. So these functions have roles they play in financial modeling and um, I would like you to go through all my previous videos on functions of financial modeling and then see how they can be used and use it to improve also uh, your uh, financial modeling practice. Thank you for watching.